I've sacrificed everything searching for it. A world within a story whispered to me centuries ago. Of a timeless power, infinite in knowledge, voracious in hunger. The entity. A realm so close to ours, but always out of reach. Until I found him, Frank Stone, my key, my killer. I am Augustine Lieber, and I'm about to change our worlds forever. I'm assuming you're the night watchman here. I am. Or just you? Covering the entire site? Oh, no. I got help. Where are they now? On duty? Mother Manor. Merlin just goes where he pleases. Merlin? My dog. Doberman Pincher. Best friend a fellow could ask for. Loyal to the seventh horn sounds. Trust him more than I trust myself. So, you and the dog. Merlin. Merlin. You two are security for the whole mill? I know, I know, overkill. But between the two of us, we get the job done. Though, I don't know where he's got himself to tonight. Maybe I scared him off. Scared him off? <laughs> that, that is a good one.
Thomas Jefferson Holtz is the name. Call me Tom. Officer Sam Green. You ain't one of Kusich's deputies, are you? My captain has loaned me to Sheriff Kusich as additional manpower for the duration of this investigation. Oh, you mean the business with the missing boy? That's right. Been drinking, Tom? Just a little nightcap. Nightcaps usually happen before a nap. This a regular habit? Regular? Oh, no, not regular. More soda medication, taken only in time of need. How often is that? That what you come out here for? To give a veteran a hard time about his medicinal practices? No. I'm here because a child is missing. And every minute wasted is another chance gone to find him. Boy, you ain't gonna find him here. I'd know it in my bones if that boy were within a mile of this mill. What makes you so sure? Is ESP a side effect of your medicinal practices? Now that is out of line! Sorry, officer. I want to help. I really do, but I don't know what else to tell you. You're welcome to have a look around the place yourself. Thank you, Tom. I think I'll do that. Happy to oblige. An open window. I can get in through there. Huh. 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 Easy does it. Hello? Anyone here? It's police. <laughs> Who's there? Ugh, smells like death. Hey, mister. That's Officer Green. Sure. You haven't seen Merlin, have you? No. Yeah. Sorry. Ugh. 
You all right there? Ugh. Yeah, it's just... Jesus, you don't smell that? <sighs> Sniffer's out of commission. <laughs> Got a little too up close and personal with a can of mustard gas back in the trenches. <laughs> ah. It can be a blessing in disguise. Ugh. Gotta find out where it's coming from. What's it smell like? Nothing good. Merlin! There you are, boy. We wondered where you got to. <gasps> if you two made proper acquaintance. Ugh. God damn it. <clears throat> you put this out for him? No. It looks like someone else has found his way to your boy's heart. Through his stomach. It ain't possible. Merlin and me, we're a team. Who'd want to come between a man and his best friend? What's that? Some kind of wiener mate? Will you look at that? That damn dog? Think that belongs to the boy you're looking for? There's no proof it does. But what if... Do yourself a favor and park that thought. Because all your guesses so far tonight have been way off base. What was that sound? Stay behind me. So, what is this thing? The grape? Yeah, what is it for? <laughs> it's, uh, for the furnace, I think. You don't know for sure? Yeah, I work at the mill, not in the mill. Hmm. Huh. Gotcha. Huh. Stand back. Junk! <clears throat> you want me to give you a hand? Take this. Use the radio in my car and call the station. Where, where are you going? You, you really think that boy's down there? I don't know. But I got a feeling, and it's not a good feeling. Hey. I'm gonna need you to take this, too. 
Make sure the sheriff gets this. Oh, oh boy, I don't know. Sheriff could use a little pick-me-up right about now. Hey, you really want to be remembered as an old drunk who could have done something when he had the chance? That ain't you. Don't let that be you. I... I... Uh... Step up. Get your head straight. All right? Yes, sir. This has got to be it. Ah, this place turns my stomach. Goddamn small spaces.
This is right.
Mom? What's wrong? I'm here. Everything's all right. Do this, Maddie. Just stay on the right side of the road. I mean, the left. The left side is the right side. The scaffold was high, and eternity was near. Is that a hitchhiker? We don't pick up hitchhikers. Eyes on the road, Maddie. Guess we're here. Creepy doorbell. Good sign. Hello! I'm here! No way I've come all the way out here and nobody's home. Let me in, please! Hello? Is anybody here? Better look around, see if I can find anyone. Well, this must be the place. Ah, 
Hello. Another victim. Hello, victim? Just a little dry British humor. Oh, you're British? No, but spend a little while in a charming country house like this and it kind of rubs off on you. I am so sorry. Where are my manners? My name is Stan. And you would be? Ah, uh, Maddie. Well, nice to meet you, Maddie. Uh, short for Madeline. Madison, actually. Ah, okay. Uh, like the Avenue. Like, oh, <laughs> in New York. Greatest city in the world. <laughs> Ever been? Oh, yeah, it's where I live. I mean, it's where I lived. But now I kind of live in Berlin, or, well, I go to school in Berlin. So I'm not technically a citizen there or anything. And New York is still kind of my home, because, you know, it's New York City, and, like, once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker, you know? Well, Madison Avenue. Now that you're here, it seems like the party can finally get started. <laughs> uh, well, not much of a party. Uh, yeah, you're telling me. This place is like super duper creep town, right? It's not just me. I was taking a look around before and let's just say I'm surprised it hasn't been condemned by the local authorities. Yikes. Lights don't even seem to work right. How do you mess up lights? That's like basic modernity, right? Right. Yep. The state of this place doesn't exactly reflect well on our mysterious host. Hey. Linda Castle. I am honored, no, humbled, to make your acquaintance. Hi, hi. It's truly a great pleasure to be graced by your presence. Okay, sure. Likewise. It's not every day you get to meet one of your all-time favorite horror filmmakers face to face and shake their hand. I would have gotten here sooner, but my car broke down and I just couldn't get anybody to stop for me. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know what? Don't worry. I needed the exercise. Wait, wait, hold up. Are you saying that you saw the Linda Castle stranded on the side of the road and, and you didn't stop? Uh, yeah. This is the director of my mother, my father, my blood. Nerve biter. Blade Skinner? Dismember, dismember the 25th of December. <laughs> I had no idea who she was. That's no excuse! Hey, you're a horror filmmaker. I thought, like, number one rule of horror movies was never pick up hitchhikers. Actually, it's never have sex. <laughs> but uh, no one has sex in movies anymore anyways. Fair enough. I probably wouldn't have picked me up either. <clears throat> it is a classic trope. I don't use tropes in my films. Well... I use archetypes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Very smart. Maybe our host has left something out for us. What do you do, Stan? Oh, I won't bore you with all the details, but it involves money and fast cars and huh. trading. Movie po or Hey, either of you heard of Murder Mail? Holy shinobi. You're kidding, right? No. Not the only one around here who's familiar with it. Wait, this is one of yours? It's one of the first things I ever worked on. Super low budget. We had no idea what we were doing. Should never have seen the light of day. I still wish it hadn't. Why? Well, things tend to get blown out of proportion. I heard it was only screened a few times, and each time the audience flew into a rabid, murderous rage. No, no, come on. Don't try and deny it. The film is legendary. I think people were just bored out of their minds. Look, I'm sure they made you sign all sorts of non-disclosure agreements, like... What? Who? The government. When they confiscated and destroyed every existing copy of the film. Oh, give me a break. I heard they kept at least one, just in case. And the CIA has got this secret lab called Leary's Memorial Institute where they use it for enhanced interrogation. How do you know all this? I'm a fan. 
And it pays to know this kind of stuff. to happen I don't know but I am taking the theatrics <laughs> ah good I see you three have wasted no time getting acquainted with each other I'm so very sorry for the delay in my arrival there are a great many things that require my attention at the moment and I would hate to have to deprive you of my full attention while we are together <clears throat> ah yes and speaking of needing attention all dried up, are we? We can't have that. After all, you're far too capable of a negotiator when you're sober. And twice that when I'm not. <laughs> Madison, would you also like a refreshment? Uh, it's just Maddie. Oh, my mistake. Maddie it is. Oh, it's fine. Nonsense. Never be shy about what you call yourself. Your name is who you are. That's important to remember. And who are you? I call myself Augustine Lieber. Nice to meet you, Augustine Lieber. Now that we are properly introduced, I must again offer you a drink. Sure, yeah. I'll just have whatever Stan's having. Of course. And you? No, thanks. I think you may like it. Never had a drink in my life. I don't plan on starting now. I know it's been quite a long journey for you all to come here today. I hope, despite that, you'll find it'll all be worth the effort. Guess that's up to you now, isn't it? I suppose it is. Well, I'll show you mine. Do show me yours. Aren't we a bit eager? <laughs> Manners, Mr. Stamford. Not all of us are caught up yet. Your drink. Thanks. You okay? Yeah, no, it's... it's nothing. <laughs> Brass tacks, Augustine. I did not come all this way just for drinks. What's in there? Look, I don't know what you two have come to sell her, but I just happen to have one of the most sought-after pieces of rare cinematic ephemera to ever hit the market. Huh. Well, that right there is the only surviving segment of film from the original camera shot celluloid of one Murder Mill. The earliest known work of a certain noted Artur, allegedly. Should be worth a small fortune. So I'm told. Hate to burst your bubble. Damn it. There goes its one-of-a-kind value. Not quite. I... I, I never knew what it was from. You told me I had to bring this to you in person if I wanted to make it. I will keep the promises I made to you. All of you. What if I don't want to sell? Well, that would be your choice. But after 40 years of pain, why would you choose to live with more? I have to apologize again, but there are urgent matters I must attend to in my private reliquary. You're welcome to continue to make yourselves at home until I return. I really think we need to finish discussing... All in due course, Ms. Castle. We were so close. I could feel the entity's force, its power pulsating through the steel mill. Until Sam Green's petty act of bravado ruined everything. The ritual disrupted. My key 
mangled. Yet Frank Stone didn't die that night. His essence was seared into the very foundations of the mill. An endless, agonized nightmare. I had to find the right means to awaken him. Just one thing you bastards will just never understand. You can tie us up. You can torture us. You can put us through every hellish trial your sick imaginations can come up with. But you'll never defeat our spirit. Just that what you don't know is uh, us humans, we're made of tougher stuff than you could ever dream of in your wildest nightmares. What? No! Oh, dear Lord, you say you want me to betray my own sister? You'll promise to let me live and go free? This is outrageous! This is unconsciousable! Leave her alone, damn you! She's innocent in all this! She doesn't know anything! You... You... You can't do this! You just can't! <laughs> <laughs> being cut in half by a giant alien saw blade. So you think if you were getting cut in half, you'd really shout, Oh God, the unspeakable agony! Yeah? Is it what I wrote in the script? Well, no, but... Please, stick to your lines. The writer's always right. That's why they're called a writer. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I stayed in character the whole time. That's good, right? Yeah, it's... Something. I'm sure we can use at least, like, part of it. How do we do, Linda? Usable? Uh, let me check the gate. You can check the gate on these little Super 8s? Um, no, actually. The lens doesn't come off, so... Somebody just wanted to show off all the fancy new crap they learned from the film production books in the library. I'm just trying to take the craft seriously. The craft! Jeez Louise! <laughs> So, are, are we good, or what? Yeah. I mean, it looked great. How did the blood gag look? Um, well... Linda, you did get the blood gag, didn't you? I mean, it's really all about how Jaime sells it. I did really sell it. Yeah, but did you get any of it in frame? You kind of see it splash up in Jaime's face a little. Ah! I told you, I wanted a wide close-up that shows off our super cool bloody arm gag and Jaime's face acting, not just an extreme shot of Jaime's face acting. I was in the moment. I have to be allowed to express my artistic instincts with the camera, too. And there's no such thing as a wide close-up. <laughs> or an extreme shot. Or face acting. It's just acting. Does anyone even care that I'm the director?
Of course. Chris, you're the director. But, like, part of the job is working with people you trust, and... I trust Linda's judgment on the camera stuff, you know? Let's just shoot both versions, and then we can see which way works better in the edit. And it'll be my way. Because I'm the director. Hold still, let me clean you off. And we'll get it on this one. If we don't, you can just make it up to me in my trailer after the shoot. Yeah. Oh, it's like spearmint cough syrup. <laughs> yeah, all my gagging was kind of real. Mm, more you guys want me to leave? All right, all right. On your feet, people. Everybody back to one. We're going again. We are going again. Okay, sound speeds? Um, uh, camera speeds. All right, everybody settle. And hold. And hold. And action. Uh, uh. <laughs> Fuck! No! Oh, dude, that is not good. What do you think you're doing in here? Oh, hi, Mr. Green. Sheriff. Sheriff, right, sorry. How many times have I told you to stay away from this place? We were just in the middle of a take. A take? For our film production. You can't shoot a movie in here. But this is where the big climax happens. This is a condemned steel mill, Mr. Rivera. And you are trespassing. Now. Unless you want to spend the night locked up in jail. I suggest you, Miss Castle, and Miss... Dixie. Miss Tammy D. Dixie. Miss Gordon. Miss Christine Gordon. I suggest you immediately vacate the premises. And you do not, under any circumstances, set one foot back here in the Cedar Still Mill. Ever. Sheriff Green, sir, with all due respect, we almost got this thing entirely in the can, and if we don't get our last few shots here in our main location, we're gonna have to scrap the whole thing. Then you're just gonna have to scrap the whole thing. All right, then arrest us. What? Arrest us for trespassing. Uh, Linda. Linda, come on. I know I'm just Robert's dad, but I'm still a cop. And you gotta start taking me seriously. Because you really, really cannot be here. Why do you care so much? I thought it was abandoned. Yeah, it's not like we're looting the place. It's not safe. Just... go home. But we've only got, like, three more little scenes, and then we're done. Well, I don't think you're gonna be doing any more filming today. Not with that. Hey, you okay, Mr. Green? Sheriff, I may. And yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Because I said I'm fine. <sighs> Look, you gotta go. Let me, uh, let me pay for the damage to the camera. But you gotta promise me you're not gonna come back, okay? How much are we talking? Ten should cover it, right? Y y yeah, uh... Probably. I gotta say, it feels a little weird to be bribed by a cop. It's not a bribe. I'm a citizen paying for the damage indirectly caused by my actions. Feels a little bribey. Hi, me. It's your camera, right? Do we have a deal? I I'm sorry. I can't take your money. What? Why? We worked really hard on this movie, and I don't think I should make a promise I can't keep. Fine. Don't take the money. But you and your friends will vacate the premises immediately, and you will not come back. Capiche? Cap... What? It means, do you understand me? Yeah, yes, sir. 
What the hell crawled up his ass? Nah, he's not so bad. Usually. We're not gonna do what he says, right? Really? We can figure out how to finish the movie when we get back to the garage. Out, sir. Thank you, Jaime. Now remember what I said. Because I'm not going to warn you again. Yes, sir. Complete and utter disaster. Don't be so dramatic. It's not like we've got a real deadline. Ugh, who needs a real deadline when every wasted second brings you closer and closer to your ultimate cosmic eternal deadline? Gothic. I like it. Hey, what are these? Oh, I got those for us all to wear when we shoot. Surprise. Wait. You guys are both acting, so it'll just be me? So you'll be like our ambassador? <laughs> yeah, not a chance. Hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa, don't open that up. I still haven't taken the film out yet. I thought it was broken. Well, yeah, the lens is cracked, but the footage is still good. Unless, you know, you open it. Ugh, whatever. We got some good stuff today. Glass half full. Dude, just let me be upset. Doesn't Sheriff Green have anything better to do with his time? Like, go after actual criminals and shit? Cedar Hill is not exactly a noted hotbed of criminal activity. That's not entirely true. There was that whole serial killer thing. Hold up, what now? When was this? Uh, I was just a baby. I don't really know anything about it. Oh, you're still just a baby. And you still don't know anything. Now, be a good little baby and tell me all about this whole serial killer business. I know some stuff. Spill it, lady. For starters, I think that's why Sheriff Green doesn't want us to go in the steel mill. Oh yeah, that's where it all went down. So you do know stuff. <gasps> and you held back, you traitor. Yeah, because I knew you'd get all like this. Hell yeah, I would, Linda. Tell me about the steel mill killer. Well, that's where it all ended. But before that, there was a whole string of disappearances. Kidnappings, really. Murders. So what was this guy's name? Maybe we should write him into the movie. Oh, um, I don't know if we... Frank Stone. Huh. So Frank Stone was actually killing people in the steel mill? Like, our steel mill? Where we were just shooting like an hour ago? That's the theory. Frank was working at the mill, but I think it was on its last legs by then. Probably not a lot of people around. They shut it down right after. Who were the victims? Just people. Some from the town. Some were never identified. The killings were random. There was no pattern. Like, how many are we talking? No one knows for sure. OK. 
guess they never found the bodies. They found parts. Seriously, guys, I just want to know why you withheld all this crucial murder mill information from me until now. It wasn't relevant? There's no world in which that's true. I need to know everything. That's pretty much all I know. Same. <sighs> There's got to be more to it. You've got a library card. Look it up. Linda, can I borrow your library card? Nope. I guess it doesn't really matter what happened at the mill since we can't finish shooting there with a busted camera. Hey, why don't we just take the camera to the drugstore and see if we can get it fixed? So, yeah, the thing is, I kind of spent the rest of the budget on the t-shirts. <sighs> Unless you know of anybody looking to get into film finance, we're kind of shit out of luck. <laughs> What? Uh, um... You want a piece of me, too? Howdy, partner. How's life on the range? Did he hit his head or something? The hell's wrong with you? Uh, nothing. Sorry. Ugh, why is Dad such a demanding asshole? I came home to help, not do everything. I mean, I'm not a maid. Do I look like a fucking maid? You better not say I look like a fucking maid. He's just worried about Mom. Psh, more like he's worried that as soon as she croaks, I'm out of here. And then he'll have to be his own fucking maid for once in his life. Jeez, Bonnie. That's pretty harsh. I don't mean it's not true. Well, maybe you should cut him a little slack, you know? This is hard for him. And me too. Yeah, well, you didn't have to put your whole life on hold and come all the way home from New York City and suddenly play mom while your own mom is sick. I know, I didn't have to do all that. But I would have done it, just like you, you know? Because family comes first. Family comes first? Is this an after-school special? I'm trying to give you a compliment, Bonnie. Ugh, whatever. I, yes, I gotta get out of this house, like, pronto. Um, so Bonnie probably could have been a good person to ask for some money to fix the camera. She gets art and stuff. Hey, maybe we don't need Bonnie after all. Wait, hi, May. Seriously? I'll be her back later. No harm, no foul, right? I don't know, man. Bonnie! You left your bag! Thanks. You didn't touch my stuff, did you? Yeah, don't touch my stuff. Good call. There's gotta be some way to get some cash around here, right? If we really need cash, there's always... The nuclear option. Oh, no. What's the nuclear no, option? I'm just no, saying. No, no, no. I am not debasing myself uh, again. What are we talking about here? <sighs> All right, fine, I'll do it. Do what? I'll go ask my dad for money. Oh. He makes me feel really bad about it. No, he doesn't. He can be very sweet when Jaime asks nicely. Yeah, and then I feel really bad about it. Well, you're gonna feel a lot worse if you don't go ask your daddy for those dollars. Understood. 